G'day and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I wanna show you what you need to consider to permanently fix neck-related headaches. And how we're gonna structure this video is I wanna show you one really simple exercise that you can do that will not only help you better understand where your potential headaches are coming from, but will hopefully give you the power to not only reduce them in the moment, but give you the sense that you're conquering them long-term. On top of this, we're gonna talk about some strength exercises that you can try to optimize the function of your neck. We're also gonna talk about the role of stress in neck related headaches. And then at the end of the video, I wanna go through the number one thing that you need to be aware of if you wanna give yourself the best chance of permanently fixing these neck related headaches. So let's get into it. So the first thing that's important to touch on with any conversation around headaches is that headaches can be caused by a number of different things. The headaches that we're going to cover in this video are cervicogenic headaches or referred from your neck. Please know that there can absolutely be sinister causes of headaches. Headaches are not something that you need to stuff around with if you're not convinced it's being caused by your neck. The first exercise we're going to go through will ultimately help you better understand if your headaches are neck related. But if you are unsure in any way, please speak to someone professionally like your doctor to make sure that you're not missing something highly important. But with that being said, if we're under the assumption that your headaches are neck related, it's important to understand that your headaches are essentially a referred pain from the top of your neck. And ultimately what this conversation is about is how do we optimize the health and function of the top of your neck so that it doesn't get annoyed and aggravated enough to refer and generate pain to somewhere through your face and head. Whether you consider you have a migraine or a headache, sometimes those labels can be a little bit confusing because some people call a migraine a really nasty headache. So what I'd like you to keep an open mind with, repeat the same process that we're gonna go through regardless, just to see if your symptoms are neck related, regardless of the label that we've attached to it. And what we wanna do first here is before we get into this, we wanna make sure that we take note of exactly how your symptoms feel. Give your headache score out of 10, with zero being nothing, 10 being the worst headache imaginable. Now, obviously, if you are up in the eights, nines, and tens, go to an emergency room, get yourself checked out. If you've been given the all clear, come back and try this. But whatever score you feel your headache is out of 10, take note of that, because once we do this exercise, we wanna come back and immediately reassess how your symptoms feel to gauge whether we've actually done something. So what we wanna do here is we wanna take the ball, we wanna place the ball, typically right up the top of your neck at the base of your skull. We want it to just gently come off to the side a little bit so you're still on the fleshy part and we're going to get you to lie down on the ball. What we're looking for here is we want to go looking through the top three or four levels of your neck for tissue that ultimately feels thick, tight, restricted. We definitely care about whether anything feels tender or sore but ultimately we want to put your soreness aside and go looking for what's mechanically restricted and dysfunctional in this area. So again if the ball is in the middle of your neck just off to one side you'll be on the soft tissue but more importantly you'll be putting some pressure through the joints of your neck and in my experience clinically it's the joint dysfunction and the joint overload that can create the referred sensations that we experience and identify as a headache so when you're right up the top just off to the side. If you find a spot in this area that feels a little bit tight, stiff or restricted, just respectfully let the ball press in. We're not rolling around as the exercise, we're just staying here until you feel like the soft tissue and hopefully the joint tissue starts to release and free up. Again, if you hit a spot and you think that is your headache, then it's a very good chance that this is where your headache is coming from. Once you've been there, then all we want you to do is just move the ball down a fraction onto the next spot that you feel is meaningful to you. And once you've worked your way down through the neck, spending you know 30 seconds a minute on each spot or whatever you feel you need to do to feel like you've made some change, then come straight back up to the top of your neck again, right where your skull curves into the top of your neck. And if you come out a lot wider towards almost behind your ear, we're still going to be biasing the joints but we're also going to be working through the suboccipital tissue. The suboccipital muscles anchor from the top of your neck into the base of your skull and again if these are sensitive and overloaded and stressed then they can also refer pain to your head in the form of a headache. And then once you've spent two or three minutes working through each area or as long as you feel is necessary, immediately check back in with your headache symptoms to see what's happened, if anything. Because again, we need to base everything we do on results. If you spend a whole bunch of time working through both sides or the side that you feel is the most restricted and you genuinely feel like something has changed with your headache symptoms, then obviously what you did matters. 
or if you didn't find anything at all that felt stiff, tight, or even tender and sore, then there might be a chance that your headaches aren't neck related. But before we tick that box and come to that conclusion, we need to be very thorough and look through all the tissue at the top of your neck and the base of your skull for any clues that might warrant our attention. And hopefully after doing that, not only should your neck feel a little bit looser and freer, but you should feel that something about your headache feels different immediately. It may not completely go away just yet because we may need to factor in one of the other things we're going to talk about in a second. But from a fundamental diagnostic and self-treatment level, taking a ball and going looking for those stiff, tight, restricted sections of your neck joints and muscle tissue at the top of your neck and the base of your skull, we need that tissue to be normal for your headaches to go away and stay away. So once you've developed a good understanding of where, if anywhere, your dysfunctional neck tissue might be, and you've hopefully been able to reduce some of that to good effect. The other piece of the puzzle that we need to consider here is stress. And the first thing that I need to say right off the top here is that stress alone is highly unlikely to be the root cause of why you have your headache. It can absolutely be a piece of the puzzle, which is why we're talking about it. But the best way to think about stress is that stress isn't specific enough to cause you a headache. As we know, stress is a whole body experience and it needs something to pick on. So if you do have overloaded, stiff, tight, restricted joints and soft tissues at the top of your neck, when we add a stressful environment on top of that, it can essentially turn a certain level of symptoms into a greater level of the same thing. And on top of that, it can ask symptoms to hang around. It can make tight muscles tighter. It can make sore joints and sore tissues sore. But the longer you're in a heightened, stressful state, the less permission that dysfunctional tissue has to go away. So as I mentioned before, there is a world where by finding and mobilizing that overloaded restricted tissue can be enough to resolve your headache in the moment. If it lingers, that can be suggestive of some broader stress related things that you can also do something about. And as always, if you've been a follower of the channel, you'll understand the importance that I place on deep breathing. If you are someone who deals with stress, anxiety, depression, those common symptoms of a nervous system that's heightened, something as simple as five to 10 deep breaths, where all we're looking for is just a comfortable full breath in with a subtle pause at the top before breathing out through pursed lips in a really relaxed way. All the way out. We're pausing at the bottom. Before repeating that process, can take someone from a heightened stressful state down to a less heightened, less stressful state. And if that stress is coming over the top and amplifying the effects of that neck related dysfunction, then we also need that situation to improve if we are to expect that your headaches are going to go away immediately and long term over time. Because once you've mobilized things and once you've down regulated things, the next step to permanently ridding neck related headaches forever is to talk about strengthening that same tissue to make it more robust. So when we talk about treating headaches, one thing we probably don't factor in enough is strengthening your neck muscles. Clinically for me, I would definitely prioritize mobilizing stiff tissue and then regulating a heightened nervous system first. Because if your tissue is already a little bit aggravated and irritated, testing it out with some strength exercises does have the potential to exacerbate things further. But when you feel ready to attempt some neck strength exercises, they're really simple to do. And how I'd like to show you this for this video is we're gonna use a TheraBand. You will absolutely look and feel ridiculous as I will when you do this, but we're all human beings and it may play into it. But if this does feel too awkward and uncomfortable for you to do self-consciously, then please do these on the floor as well. And I have a video that I'll link up here somewhere that will take you through different variations of these exercises that we're going to do. But essentially, all we want you to do is place the band around your forehead. And as I mentioned, you look and I feel ridiculous while I do this. Now we want to make sure that it's securely fastened to something because again, we don't want you to hit yourself in the face with this band. But all we want to get you to do is from being in a nice tall position, 
we want to take a step away from the band until you feel some tension at the side of your neck. We can do this a few different ways. We can hold this doing an isometric for five to 10 seconds, and then we can relax and repeat that process. The other thing that we can do because your upper neck joints and your upper neck muscle tissue is very closely related to rotational movements. Maintaining that same good position, imagine you've got a rod down the middle of your spine. We want you to rotate around that rod, fatiguing the tissue as we do this. Now the benefits of using a TheraBand is when you turn your head, it will pull on different parts of the band. The rubber of the band does help it stick to your head a little bit more, but we want enough tension and enough repetitions that you start to feel some genuine sense of fatigue up in that top part of your neck. We obviously wanna do it on both sides. But as I said, I wanna stress, we want you to do this when you feel relatively comfortable symptomatically. But once you feel your symptoms are feeling a little bit better, this is an amazing bunch of exercises to do to make your tissue more robust. And if you find that the bands that you have don't have enough resistance to them, we can actually graduate to something like this, which is the iron neck. If you're in the market for something a little bit more fancy, if we secure ourselves into the iron neck, pump it up so it sticks to my head, with the band pulling essentially horizontally, we can start to work on the same motions that we did before. But the benefit of this is that this time, we can use rotation in bigger degrees of motion and still have that same tension that something like a TheraBand doesn't necessarily give us. We can do all directions at the same time, where I'm up nice and tall, I'm feeling the tension at the back of my neck, I can do my rotation from this position as well to just bias my neck muscles differently. We can go in the other direction where I'm facing outwards. I feel the, the deep neck flexes tensing up here. I can hold this position. I can do some rotation as well. But one of the really cool things about a device like the iron neck is that we can have tension on through our entire range of motion. So by trying to keep our spine relatively upright and in a good posture, we can get 360 degrees of fatigue through the muscles of our neck. And I'm a big advocate of something like the iron neck because it does allow us to get to different parts of your neck in a relatively convenient way. But as I mentioned, whether you use a TheraBand or the iron neck, or you just do this lying down and use gravity to assist you, the goal that we need to promote here is we wanna generate fatigue. If you're not walking away feeling fatigued and to some degree a little bit looser, if you are doing the rotation exercises, then you haven't stimulated your body enough to prompt it to get better. But if we can pair up some strategies to strengthen the tissue around the top of your neck and the base of your skull and pair that up with mobility and stress relief or down regulation, then despite our best efforts, we may ultimately never be solving this long term unless we pair these concepts up with the next thing that we're going to talk about. So once you feel you've mobilized, down regulated and fatigued your tissue, the final piece of the puzzle that I alluded to at the start of the video that you absolutely need to consider and potentially get better at if you ever want to get to the stage where this is permanently better is that we need to have a very mature and open-minded conversation around your day-to-day -day neck postures for me clinically when we're trying to better understand why one specific part of your neck or your body for that instance has become stiff tight overloaded and dysfunctional enough to refer pain to your head in the form of a headache there has to be a reason for everything there has to be a reason why that is more dysfunctional than potentially the other side or lower down. And based on what I've come to understand clinically as a physiotherapist, if we could take a big enough step back and look at your day in its entirety, and we consistently look at not only what you do the most, but how you do that for the period of time that you're doing it, and we were to rank those things in order from the things you spend the most time doing down to the things that you spend little time doing, by systematically working through the things you do the most often, we'll very quickly understand what you're doing with your neck the most throughout the day. And again, clinically for me, we want to look at shapes and positions that immediately bias the top of your neck. And for most people, that can be as basic as looking down acutely on a phone, reading a book, doing arts and crafts, working with your hands, or it can be the other direction where we get into this slouchy posture and we start to poke that chin out and compress the top of the neck. Now, for it to be on one side more than the other does suggest that there might be some rotational bias 
attached to that in some way. But if we don't take a look at those shapes, we'll never get a strong sense of why we might be having this conversation in the first place. And what it might take for you to permanently fix this long term is to try and get yourself out of those shapes into a more anatomically correct position, arrange your environment to support you in that position and drag you into this shape rather than drag you out of that shape depending on where you are. If we don't do this, then all of the things we've just spoken about may ultimately just end up being short-term symptomatic relief. And it may genuinely be unrealistic for you to expect that this is gonna go away forever. So I hope that that was insightful enough to prompt you to think more broadly about your cervicogenic headaches. Let me know in the comments down below how the exercises felt for you to do and how impactful they were. Is stress something that you deal with that you didn't realize may be an intrinsic factor to understanding why this is here and why it may not be going away? And let me know so others can read as well what shapes and postures you've come up with that could be letting you down long term. On top of that, please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if this information is helpful and meaningful for you. But as always, thanks again for watching and I hope to see you next time.